morning. Well, I wanted to share this morning a little bit about the greatest story ever told. The greatest story that has ever, ever been told. How uh, the Son of God left glory. Or He left the presence of God. He left the presence, the throne room. He left, he, he left uh, that situation that He had where He had all that position where He, where he was a, the, the Son of God in glory. Amen. You know, there was a young man in the Bible, and uh, his name was Jonathan. And he met a man by the name of David. Uh, David carried the anointing, he carried the mantle. He saw something in David that was so very, very uh, strong and powerful. And, and uh, you know, Jonathan and David grew very, very close in friendship. But there was a problem that he had. He had a position. He had, as it was, his father, Jonathan's father, was a king. He had the throne room. He had the, the presence. He had all the, the pleasures of life. He had all the joy, uh, joys that that lifestyle could bring him, the best of everything. He had a friend, though, his name was David, who lived in a cave, who was sort of being challenged by David, as, uh, by Saul. As Saul chased him and, and wanted to kill him. And, so David really lived in exile. But Jonathan and David were very, very close friends. And Jonathan saw something in David that he admired and that he wanted. But there was something stronger in him than it was the pull of the world. It was the pull of position. It was the pull of, of, of comfort. It was the pull of, of, of all the good things in life that stopped him from joining up with David. And we read in the Bible, it's very, very unfortunate, but we read in the Bible where Saul and Jonathan died together. And what happened, instead of following the Spirit and following the thing that God had for his life, it chose comfort, it chose the pleasures of life, and it cost him his life. Friend, I want to say this one thing about Jesus. He left... The throne room, he left glory, he left something so dynamic and so beautiful and, and the splendor of it all. The Bible says that there's 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands singing with loud voices and, and there's a Shekinah glory and, the, and, the, and everything that, that would make people just so beautifully satisfied. Yet he left the comfort to come down to this planet, to become a man, to be despised and rejected and smitten. He knew all this was going to happen. He could have said, no, I'm not going to go. I'm going to choose to stay here in the comfort like Jonathan chose to stay in the comfort that it cost him everything. Friend, there's a lot of things in this world that will cost us something. Your, your decisions cost. It's whether we choose to serve God or whether we choose to serve the pleasures of this world. I believe that the Bible, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I, I don't believe for one minute that Jesus wants us to be some, a bunch of religious freaks. I don't believe that he wants us to just go around with, with uh, holes in the soles of our shoes. I, I believe that he, that he wants to give us life and give it more abundantly. I believe that He wants to bless us more than you could ever imagine. But to get that blessing, you've got to get out of the spout where the glory comes out. You've got to get into a position. You've got to position yourselves. And sometimes that positioning costs you something. Sometimes that positioning is a, is a decision that you have to make. I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to go this way. I want God first. And, and Jesus was this man that left the throne room of God that left all that splendor and all that glory and, and all that position that he held to come down uh, to be a humble man. It's an amazing thing that Jesus would do that. To come down to this earth to be a man, to lay down his life to redeem mankind from, re from destruction. You see, Jesus had a vision. He had a dream. He had a purpose. He had a plan. We've got to understand, I believe, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we've got to also understand the man Jesus. You've got to understand the anointed Jesus, the, the, the Christ, the Son of the living God, and we've got to understand the man, the anointed Jesus, that also walked on this planet. 
Jesus became, in other words, body, soul, and spirit. He had the ability to, to, uh, to do wrong. He was only the God Jesus. He would never have been able to have been tempted by the devil. There would have been nothing in him to tempt him. But when he became a man, the flesh man, the soul man, that man man, had the ability to, to sin, had the, uh, the ability to do what was wrong, to make wrong decisions. Friend, we've all got the ability to make wrong decisions. I made some wrong decisions with that motor. Praise God, it's only a motor. But I want to tell you, friends, I could have taken that to a mechanic, he could have fixed it up, no trouble. But I want to tell you, we made some wrong mistakes and made some wrong turns in life. But I thank you that I can take it to Jesus, amen, and he can fix us up. Do you believe that today? He can wash away our sins. He can do whatever he wants to do. We've got to understand the Lord Jesus. We've got to understand the man Jesus. Satan would have had nothing in him. Uh, Luke 4, 2, 2, it says that he was led by the Spirit and he was tempted for 40 days by the devil. He was tempted 40 days by the devil. That's in Luke 4, 2, 2. The devil would have shown everything he could at him. He would have shown everything he had. He would have thought, this is my chance. This is an opportunity that I have to take this man of God off course. I would have, this is my opportunity to, to stop the plan of God for humanity. The Bible says that after he was tempted in every way, that he in Luke 4, 14, it says that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Only way to overcome temptation and the plan of the devil is to stay in the spirit. What concerns me a lot about modern church today is that we are walking away from the spirit world. We're walking away from what I believe is the greatest asset that man can ever have outside of our salvation, and that is to be filled with the spirit of God. To be filled. Can I hear an amen? Amen. To be filled with the Holy Spirit. To have the anointing of God on your life. To be led by the Spirit. To let the Spirit of God strengthen you. It says you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You're going to be a witness. You see, friend, without power, without, if we're just being led by sin, we're no witness. Too many people today, there's, there's, a, there's double standards in our lives. There's, there's too many compromises. I believe that God wants a people that will, will be wholly His. That will understand the anointing. Understand the presence of God. Understand what God has for our life. Understand that we're not just mere men and women on this planet. But we're part of an army of God. We're part of the kingdom of God. We're part of the plan of God. We're part of what God wants to do. You know this morning or the other day I had a thought. There is one question that Jesus or God or whoever it is that's going to be up there going through our life with us will never ever ask you. And that question is, is what church did you go to? Friend, we belong to something bigger than a church. We belong to the kingdom of God, amen. We belong to an army that God is raising up. God wants to raise up an army of people that will believe and put their trust in Him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. I want to tell you that I believe that there's something that God is wanting to put on the inside of us that will cause us to, to walk away from some things and walk towards some things. Amen. I don't, I don't know about you, but that's, I, I, I sense a strong, strong pull of God today that that's what God is doing. The only way to overcome is to stay in the Spirit. The Bible says that he who speaks in unknown tongues speaks mysteries unto God. It also says that we edify ourselves. We build ourselves. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will rise up as on wings of eagles. They will run and not be weary. Amen. Do you believe that today? Yes. See, there's something there, I believe, in the realm of the Spirit that we've got to get a hold of. If we continue to live in the flesh, we'll just live in the flesh. But if we live in the Spirit, I believe we'll find strength. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 3 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. A lot of people today are wanting to, you know, God, but friend, there's something that God wants first. He wants our hearts. He wants our hearts, amen? Just wants us to surrender to Him. Doesn't matter where you're at, what you've done, where you've been, but to be able to offer our hearts. God, I offer you my heart today. I offer you my life. I just give myself to you. And then, Lord, this is the way I might want to go, but Lord, I know that that's not what you really want. I know it's wrong. So, God, I want to not lean to my ways. I want to lean to your ways. I just don't want to think the way my logic wants me to think. I want to think the way you think. By faith, they subdued mountains. By faith, by faith, by faith. I, I believe that uh, understanding these sort of things will help us. Lean not to your understanding, but every way acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. See, Jesus came and He was in the world. What was He doing? He was reconciling man back to God. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest, that He might destroy the works of Satan. That's what He was doing. He wasn't here on some vacation. He was here on a, with a purpose and a plan. And you know, you and I have got to understand that we're here with a purpose and a plan. It's not to build a big house or build this or this or that, but it's to be somebody that is useful in the kingdom of God. Be able to find our place. Find where God wants us. Understanding. Understanding. Jesus was in the world recon reconciling man back to God. He said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. He also said, and the Bible also says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. So it's going around really showing people the love of God. Showing people again the power of God. Showing people what the anointing could do. Showing people what a man or a woman or a child that has given their whole life to, to Christ, to God rather, to the purpose and the plan, what you can do with God. What you can do through God. God was with Him. And I believe that God wants to be with us as well. God wants to be with us. And here he is in the world. And as he went through the world, and as he went through this life, there's times there when, when he could have cried out. He could have done a lot of things. As people spat upon him, as they, as they rejected him, as they, as they lied about him. But Jesus was in the world reconciling men back to God. Jesus was in the garden. In Mark 14, uh, verse 34, I'm just going to read uh, some verses here to you. And it says, Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. Sometimes we think that, that Jesus, when he was on this planet, was just like a walk in the park for him. He was the Son of God. He was this, he was that. But I want to tell you, friends, I want to tell you the Word of God shows us that this Jesus, this Jesus was a very much a man. He was the Son of God, yes, but He was also very, very much a man. And He starts to talk about His soul, the soul of Him. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. It, it, I, even, even to death, stay here and watch. And He went a little further and fell down on the ground and He prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba Father, all things are possible to you. You know, friend, this is it's an amazing thing because how often do we quote the scripture? You can do all things, Jesus. But there's some things there that, that Jesus, you know, that, that God wants us to go through, to break through, to, to, to get the victory in it. He's not just going to take away that's some of the things from our lives. He wants us to overcome in it. He wants to triumph in it. He wants us to find the power of God. He wants us to find the purpose of God. He wants us to find the plan of God. Amen. It's easy just to say, God, you can do everything. You can do this. 
take this, you know, this sickness or take this thing. Uh, no, do not believe for one minute that God gives us sickness. But I want to tell you, God wants us to find the bigger picture in the midst of trouble. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver us out of them all. But God wants us to rise up again. He wants us to stand strong. He wants to declare. He wants somehow or other to know, my God, no, no weapon formed against me can prosper. And this sickness or this thing or this situation or whatever it is that's around me right now, it is not going to prosper in my life. I'm just not going to ask you for a gift out of jail card. I'm not just going to ask you just to put a little bit of damn oil on this and fix it up. But my God, I want you right now to show me how I can rise up above the scene within the name of Jesus and overcome it and destroy it. That this thing will never come back again. It will never destroy me again. Remember last week we were talking about Dagon. How they took the presence of God into Dagon's tent. Or into Dagon's house. And Jesus, the presence of God is there. The, the Shekinah glory, the whole show's there. And God would have looked up at Dagon and said, On your face, boy. Until Dagon fell on his face and smashed. And the Bible says that that thing, they never ever worshipped Dagon in that place again. And I'm talking about getting the victory. I'm not talking about getting a band-aid on a situation. I'm not just talking about a little bit of dab or do. A little bit of prayer will fix it. I'm talking about rising up as a mighty army that you actually destroy the works of the enemy over your life and that enemy will never bring that thing back upon you again in Jesus name please don't misunderstand me don't misunderstand me here. God wants us to get the victory over it. It's the goodness of God, I believe, that helps us through our infirmities. But I want to tell you, God wants you to overcome that sickness does not come nigh your house, amen. That none of these diseases will come nigh your house. That's how big God is. That's what God wants us to learn, to, to, to triumph over the devil. Uh, and here he is in the garden, and, and he's saying, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even under there. Lord, uh, all things are possible to you. All things are possible. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Jesus, God was saying, I just don't want to take this cup from you. I just don't want to, you know, take this situation from you. But what I want you to do is I want you to rise up and I want you to annihilate the devil once and for all. Amen. I want you to over, triumph over him once and for all. Do you believe that today? Yes. Let that sink in for a little second. He just didn't want to just take him out of the situation, which is what he wanted at that stage. Take me out of the situation. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Sometimes we can we can be like that. And God just get the, get this little thing off me. He said, "No, come on. There's a bigger. There's a bigger victory in this. Sure, I can take you out of this. Sure." I, I, can, I, can, I can free you just like that. But I want you to go through this so that you will destroy that which is attacking you right now forever and ever and ever. That's why today we can be free. That's why today we can be healed. That's why today we can, we, we can know with guarantee that we're on our way to heaven. Amen. Very quiet in this Presbyterian church today. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Jesus in the garden. Uh, and it says, uh, And he came and found them asleep. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest uh, you enter temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. He came back to God and he asked him again. He asked him again. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. And, 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 and you know, then he goes from the garden and now we have Jesus on the cross. The cross. The cross. Friend, it's something today that, that I don't know, the cross... It's, I believe it's misunderstood. It becomes some religious symbol. It becomes a 
Something there that many in the church, even as we hear about the cross, you know, it's something there, the cross, okay? Become, a, become something that is not. Friend, but today, without the cross, there is no resurrection. Today, without the cross, there is no victory. Today, without the cross, you and I are hopeless. Amen. Without the cross, I thank God for the cross of Calvary. Amen. I thank God today that Jesus carried that cross and he took that cross and he allowed them, he hung there on a cross. It was his love for you and I that caused him to hang on that cross. It wasn't anything else. It wasn't the nails. It wasn't the enemy. It wasn't the soldiers. It wasn't anything else but his love. And it wasn't anything else but the, the, the revelation that he got, I believe, in the garden when he said, when, he, when they spoke and they said, if there's any way, take this cup from me. But nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. And he goes away and he prays for an hour. And I believe while he was praying for an hour, the Spirit of God would have spoken to him and said, my son, this is your finest hour. My son, this is the whole purpose and the plan that you came onto this planet that you might destroy the enemy. The enemy does not know what he's doing. The enemy thinks that he is triumphing over you. But I want to tell you, you're going to triumph over him in it. And you're going to destroy him. And you're going to pull him down. And you're going to strip him of everything that he's had. And you're going to give back to mankind the power and the anointing and the victory that I'm going to give to them. But I to tell you something, there's only one way and that way is through the cross and I don't know, the Bible says that as he hung on the cross, there was a smile on his dial because of the joy the joy of seeing a bunch of people in a, in a building somewhere, or whether it be 37,000 people at Hillsong this morning past, or another group of people under a palm tree in Papua New Guinea, or whether it be a bunch of people, the joy I say it again, it's one thing Jesus is never going to ask you is what church did you go to? He's going to ask you, did you give me your heart? Yes. Have I got your heart? You see, we can give it. Jonathan gave David his heart. But he didn't. He didn't go all the way. He could have gone with David and he could have, he could have, uh, could have had everything restored but for a period of time it didn't look like it. But David became the king, amen. David had the position and, and, and young Jonathan could have gone with him. Son, I would love to take it from you but there's only one way. You know, today we've got churches and we've got people and we've got religious systems religious societies and we've got cults and we've got goodness knows what there that say all religions go to heaven. You know what? You know what separates the Christians from other religions? It's the cross. It's the cross. It's the cross. It's the resurrection. Muslims don't have a cross. Muslims don't have the cross. They don't have it. Jesus was just a good guy. I can almost see Jesus there uh, as, he, as he was in the garden, as he was stripped. The Bible says, I don't know how you interpret this because I've, I've read it a few times and I don't know whether he actually sweated uh, drops of blood or whether the sweat was like drops of blood. But all I know is that when you're tormented uh, in soul and body, then as you sweat profusely. And great drops of sweat, like blood, came from Jesus as he, as he was there, as he was travailing, as he was as he was tormented by by the the, the, the thought of the cross, the thought of the death, the thought of what he was going to go through. But I believe the Spirit of God would have got a hold of him, just like today Jesus could get a hold of your life. Jesus can get a hold of your life and, and, and whether you're going through anguish or where, where, you're, where you're at today. But friend, if, you, if we don't come the way of the cross, with it, with this, how can he get hold of us? Speak to us. I want to tell you, I want to tell you that Jesus wants to destroy every enemy that attacks your life. 
He wants you to have the victory over every enemy that attacks your life. He wants you to have total, total dominion, total authority, total victory. Jesus on the cross. Without the cross, friends, there's no, there's no eternal life. Without the cross, there's no victory. The cross, the cross, the cross. The cross of Calvary, amen. Friend, I'll tell you, there's a lot of people today with religious things and they're nailing themselves to the cross. I thank you, Jesus, and I don't have to nail myself to the cross. I thank you today that I can say, Jesus, I apply what you did on the cross. Hallelujah. I, I just take what you did. Hallelujah. The cross, the cross, at the cross, amen. We went on a tour to Jerusalem and uh, we had a, a guy there, a, he, was, um, he was a Jewish man. He knew more about the Bible than anybody else in the bus and he was, uh, just knew the New Testament backwards. And, and as we were there and as we were walking through and he said, the religious people, he said, they come through and they, they go all the way up through and all of them, they carry the the cross and goodness knows what they say that where Jesus went. But we're standing in a position in a, in a place there and he said, see the spot where we stand. He said, see that hole, that big wall there that's been, a hole that's been bricked up. I said, yeah. He said, that was the main gate. He said, I do not believe for one minute that they took Jesus up there. He said, when they crucified somebody, they crucified them at the main gate. So if the people coming into the city would see, this is what happens. The people that do break the law. He said, I don't know where you got that old hymn that you guys sing. On a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross. It sounds beautiful, doesn't it? But he said, no, he said, it wouldn't be on a hill far away. He said, it would have been right at the front gate. He said, it would have just been straight out there. You know, sometimes we can get religious concepts and religious thoughts and things like that, but friend, we've got to ask Jesus, Jesus, would you please come and help me to understand the cross. Jesus on the cross. Jesus on the cross. Paying a price. And I love that verse that says, for the joy with joy because he had a revelation son you got I'm just going to give you a glimpse I'm just going to give you a glimpse of what's going on because then he's on the cross but then he goes into Hades he goes into Hades thank God he went to Hades he went somewhere else first he went to the very throne of God and presented his blood. He gave the blood and said, here it is. And on that, there's a sign that said, pay in full. Man's redemption, paid in full. Now, I'm going back down there to give that son <laughs> what he deserves. I'm going down there right now to sort him out. And he went down there for three days and for three nights. As the enemy would have jeered and laughed and tormented him and done everything else. As the demons would have thought, we've got this man. But I, I, I see, and I want to use preacher's license. I, I see the Holy Spirit chafing at the bit. I see the Holy Spirit saying, can I go now, Father? He said, no, it's not three days yet. <laughs> the time's not up. But that last second is that last second, man. The Holy Spirit rushing. Jesus rose in the very pit of Hades, triumphant. He would have had his sights on Satan. Every demon in hell would have been screaming in terror because they, they spoke amongst themselves and they said while he was on this planet, he said, he said on the third day he would rise again. This is the third day. They would have been scared. Do you know what? Can I tell you what? The, the devil is scared stiff of people like you and me getting a revelation of who we really are in Christ. What's really ours, what we can do. And as he would have stood over there and as he would have stripped 
sake of his authority, as he would have taken everything off him, as, as he would have made a show of him openly in the very pit of hell. Can I say this? Every devil in hell, every demon that's ever on this planet, friend, don't be frightened of demons, don't be frightened of, of devils or whatever else, because you have power in the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, and every devil in hell will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 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 Every devil bore witness. Every demonic force bore witness. Every principality and power and dominion and might that's ever, ever been on this planet saw that day. Saw what Jesus did to the devil that day. And they tremble and they fear. That's why the Bible says all you need to do is resist the devil and he will flee from you. In other words, run in terror. But what do we do? We accept his bombardment. We accept his, his whatever it is. No, rise up. Jesus, in the very pit of hell, he rose again. Amen. He rose again. Where is he today? He's seated in heavenly places. By the right hand, now Jesus is on the throne. Jesus is on the throne. He had a journey. The greatest story ever told is the story of this man, Jesus. This man, Jesus, who came on this planet, tempted in every way, scourged, smitten, but Jesus rose again. Triumphed over every onslaught. Triumphed over every attack. Triumphed over everything. And you know what? He says this. He said, these things that I do, you can do also. These things that I do, you can do also. These things that I do, you can do also. Could it rise up? Could it take our place? He lifts me up. He lifts me up. Can we sing that again? That, that today as we're preparing our hearts for communion, he lifts me up. When I'm on his shoulders, I mean, where are you today? Where, where are you seated? Where are you today? Where, where are you? Are we on that place where he wants us to be? We're on his shoulders. We're letting him carry us through. He lifts me up.